Hey guys, welcome back to Hogwarts Park and thank you so much for being so patient with me last weekend because I couldn't do an, a video. We, <laughs> we had a patrons only stream and I think those guys can attest to my utter confusion. Uh, I was not able to do anything, uh, really. So um, I started this with a live video, you know, me talking to you while I'm recording. Um, by the way, to make up for the missing video last week, I thought I'd make this one extra long. And um, I, I kind of feel like I need to say that this is going to become a Care of Magical Creatures station in Hufflepuff, even though this is probably in the title of the video and maybe even <laughs> on the thumbnail. But you know me. So, um, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, able, was, was very, very, very confused, very rambling. Uh, so I, at some point, I decided to do the rest as a speed build. And while editing it, I, uh, I, I tried to keep my original uh, narration in, but it was just, it wasn't, it wasn't very good. So I put, I took it out and turn it into a speed build. I hope you m don't mind. This is long enough um, without the real time talking. Um, would have been even longer if I, if, I, if I hadn't done it like this. Uh, but yeah, so uh, thanks again. Thanks for your patience. Uh, thanks for all the lovely comments about Nuri. Uh, she's doing much better now. Uh, she's actually starting to like me again. She didn't for a while because I had to give her so much medication. Uh, had to put eye ointments in her eye six times a day. And that alone was enough for her to run away from me every time I approached her, which was really heartbreaking. But we're fine now. We're fine now. So let me tell you. I mean, I have all the time in the world. I have an hour to tell you what I'm doing here. So, um, but yeah. Um, by the way, if you're new here um, and you, <laughs> you didn't leave yet and uh, seem to uh, find yourself enjoying my rambling, uh, I, I would ask you to consider subscribing. Thank you very much. Um, or leaving me a like at least if you like it. Uh, if not, well, that's okay too. <laughs> so, we're doing, a, a, I'm doing a, a Care of Magical Creatures station. I first drew in like um, some paddocks. Oh my god, I'm so slow. But um, I, as I said, I have all the time in the world. So what I did so far was sort of lay down the basic layout. I wanted the center piece to be the hatchery. So um, we could watch exit animations whenever we wanted. And on the right side is going to be a petting zoo. And the left side is going to be, uh, um, yeah, like barns and all the type of buildings you need to take care of animals, including two exemplary exhibits that um, are a showcase as to how you would design the perfect habitat for uh, for a creature. And um, as the, the chapter said, this one is for the Spinoceratops. Uh, and I made it snowy because the woman in the trailer said it liked cold and because we know from Camp Cretaceous that it does. So uh, I'm on this map. I thought I might as well do a snowy habitat. And um, the title of this chapter already kind of spoiled what kind of animal they are in this Hogwarts world. Um, because I was, I was looking at them and thought, okay, so what kind of animal could this be? It has a horn. What kind of animal that I know of has a horn? One horn. Unicorns. Okay, so, but no, they don't look like horses. Ah, but there's the, the erumpent. I don't know how to pronounce it. I, 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 I actually don't know. But um, the erumpent is an animal. Ooh, I should have grabbed the um, fantastic beasts and where to find them. 
The Erumpid is an animal that hasn't, and now I'm doing the gate on path hitbox trick because I want these exhibits to be interactive, but I'm going to tell you a bit more about this. First, let me tell you about the species because I, there is the Erumpid. We have seen, we never have, we haven't ever seen an Erumpid, but we have seen its horn in the Deathly Hallows. It, the, it, the, the horn of the Erumpid is highly explosive and it's very dangerous. And I, I, I can hear you uh, saying, but why would you put it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an interactive exhibit then? But, uh, hear me out. So the Erumpid has this uh, exploding horn and um, it sprays a liquid from its horn that is also very explosive. And um, Luna Lovegood's father had one in his house. And it's the reason the whole house exploded. <laughs> so um, I immediately, immediately thought of that. And then I looked it up in the, care, uh, not Care of Magical Creatures, in the uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And turns out it's an animal that is native to Africa. Uh, <laughs> um, so it's not at all an animal who likes to live in the cold. Uh, but then I thought, yeah, well, you know what? Maybe there's a subspecies, the Alaskan Erumpent. It likes the cold and uh, its horn is not like explosive explosive. It's like a very docile version <laughs> of the rampant. And um, when it gets excited, it sprays glitter and fireworks. It's sort of the twilight version of the rampant, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that could be kind of fun. And uh, since it's glowing in the dark, uh, I thought this would be kind of nice, you know, to have uh, an animal in a p in in this section that you could enter um, their exhibit and ha pet it and uh, find out like with a care of magical creatures person there telling you all you need to know and having fun with it and getting sprayed with glitter and <laughs> because when they're excited they sort of like like to I don't know um, blow up some snow with uh, their accompanying glitter li liquid fireworks spray they do <laughs> So uh, this is this is what they are. Uh, <laughs> so right now I'm putting um, putting rocks in the enclosure, and um, I decided that it would be kind of cool to have the to give them like a little area up there next to the path that is one day going to exist up there um, to kind of yeah come up there and say hi to the people. And um, I also decided that I want to have like, uh, yeah, right there, a waterfall uh, coming down there. I have turned on the day night cycle, by the way, as you can see, because of course I want, I always like uh, actually building with the day night cycle on. It's a bit weird for editing. Um, and it's a bit, it's, not I mean when I'm um when I'm recording what I built um I built differently than when nobody's watching uh so usually when the day night cycle sort of turns to night I go somewhere where um like guest section stuff put lights everywhere see how it looks when it's dark um and do something there and when it's getting day time again, I go to another space where, you know, it's um, easier to build in daytime. But um, yeah, now it's night. And I decided to put some uh, lights hidden uh, um, behind the rocks to have them glow a little bit. Um, that's like an easy version to have something, an easy method to have something look as if it was uh, otherworldly, a little bit magic. That's like the easiest way to add the feeling of magic. 
<laughs> you know, traces of ancient magic in this exhibit. But I also figure um, since those animals are spraying glitter and fireworks and stuff, it might be like just some leftovers from their excitement <laughs> between the rocks. Anyhow, I thought, um, you know, with the glowing animals to add some glow to the rocks would be kind of cool. And I changed the colors to white and a very light pink because that's the colors they're glowing. And they also have like this very light greenish glow, but I chose to ignore that. Would have been, I mean, pink and green is always nice as a color combination, but I, I decided to stay with the eerie white. And here they come and just a bit of pink. And uh, by the way, the pink in this exhibit is a, a sort of sort of became a um, a thing, a theme in my <laughs> in my head because you're going to see really soon once I brought them over there. And once uh, the sun is coming back up again, I mean, this is the Barbie exhibit. <laughs> of this park and I love it I can't I can't even um I am what can what what is it that I want to say ah, I needed a, a a ranger station to get them over there so I placed one real quick also paused because uh, I have hunger and thirst turn on and I didn't know how long long it would be take me to figure out where to place this because as you see I'm struggling I'm putting it there because I found that this side that is next to the, to the path, parallel to the path, is the nicest one to look at. And um, what was I talking about? Ah, ah, the color pink. I actually um, started like when I was a teenager and everyone sort of started um, growing up and saying, Oh my god, pink is such an awful color, it's such a girly color, who likes pink? Then, and uh, that was reason enough for me to say, okay, if no one likes pink, then I'm the one who's going to like it. And it sort of became a thing. And um, even though I really am like the opposite of a girly girl, I love pink. I love pink. I love everything that is pink. And this exhibit is one of my favorites so far. <laughs> Just because it's so pink. And I figure I need to do more girly stuff. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this, look at this. Oh my God, when I saw this, I cracked. <gasps> With the pink clouds and the pink glow everything pink i was like i was i was in love <laughs> this is so beautiful i'm sorry if this is annoying if you uh, if you're still here if you're new and you're not used to me this is me just deal with it or don't i don't care <laughs> so yeah just a few um shots of me admiring the creatures with the pink clouds in the background lovely gorgeous i love it and um this is what their habitat looks like. I'm going to add some forest around it, but not inside because I don't want to cover up the rocks and the glow. And I have it feel very snowy and um, yeah, sort of Alaskan, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so now I'm calling them, I'm renaming them a rampant is um one of them is very colorful this one and he's the male the other two are his girlfriends now i'm adding the forest and i had another uh, habitat there and i wasn't sure what to do but then i thought okay so if i want this to be interactive i think kind of the fun way the most fun animal that i can think of would be a niffler and i showed you this Niffler den from um, Hogwarts Legacy. And I kind of want to sort of quote unquote recreate it, which is impossible, but you know, it's my inspiration. So I'm building this rock formation with this orange tree. It sucks that we don't have the yellow tree from the Pennsylvania map because this would be the perfect tree. Uh, so if you want to build a Niffler den, I don't know, if you somehow find yourself wanting to build a Niffler Den, 
in this game, I suggest you go to the Pennsylvania map and um, put down some forest and find like a singular yellow tree um, and build all the, the other stuff around it. But I, um, I think the red one, the lighter red, it sort of goes more into the a y orangey direction. The other one is more towards the red red direction. So I think it's okay. And same thing here. I added the lights with the orange glow this time because I couldn't. Ca I couldn't. I don't have like uh, coins and a ton of gold I can put around the tree. All I have is the amber and I put a few of the Sir John Hammond statues around. But I felt like that wasn't enough. And if I can sort of emulate the glow or the reflection of gold uh, onto the rocks, it would seem as if there was more treasure than, there than there actually is. Um, and so I did that. I really like how it turned out in the end. It was a lot of uh, fiddling because of tight spaces and hitboxes. I mean, you know the drill. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, hiding the lights behind rocks. Hiding the lights behind rocks always important. My uh, my cell phone is doing things. I'm putting it away right now. Stop it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, um, it'll be done soon. It's just, um, you know, trying to figure out how to hide those bests. Best. Uh, this one little rock. There you go. This is it. I think I'm going to put the yes tree forward and add just a couple of rocks and um, just a couple of uh, some more lights and one or two amber planters and that's it and then I added like uh, a couple or three of uh, the smaller trees around just to repeat the color and um, sort of blended out the rock formation to the sides and put another gate on path it's not on path but it's so close to the path that you uh, need to work with this glitch if you want to do this like have it so close to the to the path and I what can I say I'm just putting path down randomly now I decided that I want this curve to be more open adjusting the fence beautiful and again I'm fencing them in with rocks And I'm not going to give them like a space up there where they can go to. Um, no reason, really. Just uh, didn't feel like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I just uh, created this border of rocks um, that is going to blend in with forest that I'm going to put there. And like really the only open space is the little pond that is there and the area in front of it so where uh, the care of magical creatures staff and the guests would be now i put these fantastic malta trees all around the den with the treasure to sort of give it a feeling of being secluded and a little hidden because um yeah, because <laughs> no reason. I just felt like that would be kind of cool. And then I added some of the um, uh, paleobotany plants in there for our giant Niffler that is making its entry right there. Because the Niffler has a duck bill and is fluffy and like the only animal that came to my mind was the Dinochiris. So I bred three. One of them has this reddish orange color and the other two are greenish. Uh, that's like colors I saw in Hogwarts Legacy and, so and thought, okay, then, well, I might as well uh, give them 
those colors and now I hit those stupid palm trees that uh, this hatchery comes with. Giant Niffler, again. Um, it's a subspecies species of the Niffler, so it's a giant Niffler. Uh, the only difference is that it has slightly a slightly different body shape and is giant. But apart from that, it's acting like the real Niffler. <laughs> and so I'm thinking it would be kind of fun uh, to go in there, sort of bring them some treasure and uh, just have fun with them and uh, see how crazy they get when they see something shiny and um, how to take care of them. So this is, again, a perfect example of the perfect Niffler habitat and now I'm just filling in paths and um, creating a bit of a structure to this by um oh by the way the path color is I should explain um well Hufflepuff is yellow and black and um we sort of have black uh, this dark gray and um I th I felt like this um what is it the maintenance path the the light one is the closest we have to yellow i didn't want to be all black just because you know i need a highlight color i need um a, i need a secondary color to do something with the path so i decided on these two i'm going to put a ton of yellow flags around here and yellow flowers and uh, orange flowers trying to sort of create a color pattern you know uh, a color palette and now i'm creating the entry to the petting zoo with those two circular little things and in the petting zoo are going to live uh, several animals so far i only bred um oviraptor in green and blue and um, they w will be um, in this case um, jobber knolls which are animals uh, birds blue and green uh, that we saw in Hogwarts Legacy and um, they're just very very I don't know is that, what is their magical power maybe I should look this up wait a second I'm not prepared I should go check out in uh, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. So wait a second, wait a second. Okay, so the Jobbernal, apparently, um, I thought this was the Fooper, but it's the Jobbernal uh, that never makes any noise until the moment it dies. And then it releases a long scream that consists of every sound it ever heard backwards. <laughs> crazy animal uh, it's uh, it's living in Europe and North America and mainly feeds on uh, insects um, and uh, the feathers of the jobbernal are being used are very useful for potions they are used in Veritas serum which is the truth potion and memory potions um, and yeah and they are blue and green and um, um, very cute <laughs> and, and small. So, um, you know, um, Oviraptor is the perfect bird for it. A perfect bird. Okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, so this is the second entrance or the exit. However, um, whichever way you decide to go in is the the other one will be the side where you go out again probably there's also a zipline connection in there uh i think i i edited this out how i placed it because i mean you know how to place a, <laughs> a zipline it's connecting to the central uh arrival plateau uh, you know, where there's the sleeping dragon and um, path stuff. I added those two circles um, behind this uh, staff center, Jurassic Park staff center. I always like to use this when I'm doing uh, like a staff section where there's uh, take where, 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 where that is meant to be 
for people who are taking care of animals. Wow. Uh, because it has this water tower and sort of looks very barn-esque to me. Could at least have some uh, silos or whatever. This water tower might as well just be a silo. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, decorating this whole section uh, meant that I would have, uh, since I'm using the Malta buildings and they have nice sides but some of those uh, sides to the buildings are really ugly and i had to hide them with the these mortar walls um and everywhere i put this tall mortar wall um not everywhere but it's always a good opportunity to put in uh, a suit of armor or a, a sir john hammond so that's what i did um uh, lots of torches and planters this is sort of the decoration pattern i decided to use here to put this planter um between the two john hammonds sometimes i'll put uh, another potted plants next to them or in this case i'm using the yellow flags just to make sure that everyone knows that we're in hufflepuff right now <laughs> And uh, yeah, a ton of uh, yellow flags. Um, used as much of the yellow flowers I could. A lot of benches, a lot of uh, vegetation. I, um, I, I've, I have the feeling that some of you might say that I put this, I crammed this like with stuff. Um, because right now it feels like I'm covering up the entire walls I put there. Uh, but but um, as I said in the first episode, um, or the second episode, I feel like Hogwarts and the magical world is a place that is full of wonders. And there should be a ton of stuff everywhere. So that, you know, you're always a little bit overwhelmed. And there's always something to discover. And I really like that. And um, I mean, the Hammond statues that I have put everywhere, it's its not a big deal if one of them is, them is half hidden behind a tree. I don't care. But I know it's there. You know, it's a difference if it's not there. Uh, but I know it's there. It adds a level of detail and depending if you're walking around it, there will always be like a, um, a side from which you get a glance at it. And that adds to, I think, um, the impression I want this park to have, you know, add layers. And um, one layer is never enough because this is a... Um, I am so afraid of... <laughs> not being able to finish this park because I'm putting so much stuff there. Well, we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, now I'm adding planters to these little entry stairs. Uh, this is uh, stairs. It's not a steep path. It's stairs. Please believe me, even if it doesn't look like it. And Hogwarts is full of staircases that move. And this is... They're not moving, but they're stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and of course I put a lot of uh, vegetation next to this wonderful um, staircase that is leading down into the Hufflepuff section uh, and we're half an hour in I'm trying to squeeze rocks between the plants and um, lining the sides the outer sides of the stairs with rocks and vegetation and I'm going to cover the slope with, um, you know, with forest, with uh, with trees. And I I know this might seem counterintuitive to you, um, because it's an elevated walkway. You would want to be able to look down, and I can assure you, you are. Um, just not everywhere. And there are so many elevated uh, walkways here that I thought, you know, just c covering it up here and there with trees is is okay. It's not that big of a deal. This is um, an area where the staff uh, will um, like do a guided tour. 
tour from time to time and this is where they would gather where I put the rock planter to be talking about the Niffler, the giant Niffler. And maybe there is uh, like some treasure in this uh, amber planter that um, guests can grab something and take into the habitat and present to the giant Niffler and make them happy and like you. Um, I was considering putting a pile of poop there because um, and that is something that I need to keep in mind. Um, many things in the wizarding world are a bit weird. So I think like having a pile of poop there would not be the most unnatural uh, or uncommon thing you <laughs> would find in the care of magical creatures section. But I have da uh, now decided that I'm going to put a ton of poop in the herbology section that I'm also going to build. Uh, because poop is very nutritious for plants. So maybe it's it's better off there, you know? Uh, and maybe the amber planter is more uh, is more fun than a pile of poop. I might just, just as well uh, put a pile of poop somewhere. Or, by the way, if you think that I missed an opportunity or I should add something, please, um, you know where the comment section is just go there and put it in there and um uh, i can i will i will you know try to incorporate whatever you guys tell me to do so yeah i i added those two invisible fence windows into the exhibit uh, that, that is uh, sort of to give you uh, an unobstructed view and maybe um, a first opportunity opportunity to pet the animals um, without you know some people are afraid of big animals and uh, not f don't feel comfortable too close to them but maybe a slight pat on the nose and a little bit of twinkling spray is okay but with a with a, with a safety barrier between you so I added that I thought it would maybe you know not everyone whatever um putting putting planters again separating this little gathering point and um hiding this not magical looking side of the uh, staff center the jurassic park staff center again with mata walls and this time i'm putting benches next to john hammond uh some forest just to you know cover cover the sides and um, yeah uh, <laughs> what else can I say uh, have I said something so far have I said something uh, <laughs> yeah hiding putting walls up uh, hiding unmagical looking things and I decided to put this uh, Jurassic rock there just to add something you know it's probably um, I don't know it's a, a, a it's a it's a memorial for someone something uh, as there are so many in Hogwarts and um, this is one of them and now I'm just adding planters you know to the ugly sides of the ranger station uh, putting plants and benches everywhere. I'm going to redo this. What that you just this part that you just saw. Then I wanted to plant this, put this uh, fountain somewhere. So I did, and it's going to be turned into a garden. More walls, you know, hiding the very office-like looking building. It's more like the roofs. And this water tower that looks that make this look very Barney to me, Barn esque, Barney. <laughs> ah, also, what else can I say? Ooh, I might maybe. I mean, some of you might have seen already in Discord um, that I have gotten prehistoric kingdom. And I'm thinking of doing a live stream next week and starting either uh, continuing with Hogwarts 
And I sort of want to leave that up to you guys. Or starting a park in prehistoric kingdom. Uh, don't get excited. I'm still very slow. I'm a slow builder anyways. Um, I expanded this bench situation we have in front of the viewing thing, by the way, uh, as you can see. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's a park build that I had in mind for Jurassic World Evolution 2. But it's a park build that is even um, harder than this one to pull off. Um, because we don't we don't have enough stuff to make really great things with when it comes to the park build idea. And it is, uh, I'm j I might as well just tell you right now, because uh, the, if you can only make a decision when you're properly informed. So I'm calling this the movie park. So it's a park um, with dinosaurs and uh, prehistoric animals. And uh, it's like partly owned by, I don't know, movie studio. And like every exhibit has a theme of a movie or a TV series that we like. And I thought this would be kind of cool to build together. Um, and I think like uh, because what got me the idea was I, I thought I wanted to do like this, it was a random idea. I wanted to do a Breaking Bad exhibit in the desert, but it's uh, kind of hard to do, so I didn't. And then I got uh, like into a conversation with someone of you, and I'm so sorry, I don't remember your name, but it was something with Doctor Who. And I said, ah, oh, when I was building Mini UK, I thought, uh, and then I said, oh, now that I see your name, I think I should have done a Doctor Who themed habitat. And then we just kind of got into a conversation. And then the idea of this movie park came into existence. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think. I think this is the perfect idea for Prehistoric Kingdom. And it's not so much for Jurassic World Evolution 2. But um I'm eager to hear what you have to say about this. Now I'm just placing uh, cages because of care of magical creatures. Maybe sometimes you need a cage and benches. This is again another like gathering spot where uh, one of the employees would take you as a guest and uh, I don't know, do, have a little talk, uh, do a little speech. <laughs> <laughs> inform you about what's about to happen. I don't know um, how to take care of creatures, uh, how to behave when you enter the exhibits, that sort of stuff. And of course, we had to add a dragon ske uh, skeleton here as well. Um, you already saw me place the T-Rex. So the Spinosaurus, of course, had to go there. I've kind of, now that I think of it, I should have added the Alamosaurus because, ah, and I also wasn't done talking about the creatures I have in the padding zoo. But wait a second, I'm putting uh, putting up walls here and creating this tight corridor. Um, just again, you know, to um, give you a little Hogwarts feeling uh, because of all the tightly wound um, yeah, there's always something, a small corridor where there's something new to discover. So I, I created one there, fo just following the white path. Now I'm putting up a ton of planters around the entry, uh, the exit section of the hatchery. So uh, yeah, uh, I was uh, ooh, I was talking about the species in the petting zoo. So I put Ankyloticus in there. Um. Yeah, it might be a bit controversial, but um, I mean, we have an erumpent, so why not put an Ankyloticus in there? Also, it's not aggressive. It's not an aggressive animal. It can't even attack. So what is <laughs> what? What's what's going to happen? But I don't have any idea what it could be. I've been like browsing through Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, and all I can like find is that it might be something that is related to a weird uh, sort of Kelpie. 
or manticore because the manticore has the has this uh, weaponized uh tail of a what is it it's um what is it of a scorpion scorpion yes uh what else what else do we have um because i think the loch ness monster is supposed to be a kelpie and it has this long neck as does uh, the the Ankyloticus. So maybe it's a weird subspecies from Glamour Shorts for you, uh, day and night of this half of the section. So maybe it's um, a, a land living Kelpie or a weird manticore uh, something. I even thought for a second to, to have it be an, uh, this is kind of fun to have it be a blast and it screwed which is a hybrid that a hybrid bread of the manticore and the um what is it the fire crab so it's a it's a it's an animal that has the scorpion tail and um instead of a head it has uh like a, a fire crab tail uh, it has basically has two scorpion <laughs> tails. One is the tail, one is the head. It's a, a very weird creature, but it's sort of uh, fitting with like the body shape of a sauropod. So maybe maybe it's a blast and it's screwed, but those are really, really dangerous and out of control. So maybe not the perfect animal for a petting zoo. I'm just, I'm decorating now uh, the petting zoo. Uh, there is a little uh, drink uh, amenity there. Uh, just so you know, for people to hang out and watch the animals eat, I put all the, all the botanical um, uh, paleobotany plants in there. Um, this is sort of a cooperation with the herbology section that does not yet exist. But of course, if we have like this petting zoo, this walkthrough habitat in the care of magical creatures section, this is sort of where we want to show you um, what those animals eat. Um, yeah. There's really not much more <laughs> to it. So I put all of the um, paleobotany plants in there, um, tried a few spots and chose the one that I liked best that spawned there. And I tried to fiddle with um, like different pieces, decoration pieces, to have it look like it was some sort of feeder. I know, and that's what I ended up with that you can do this with the aviary perches, but I don't really like the look of it and it doesn't really, it, it doesn't look really nice and um, fun, more utilitarian, but I mean, it's, it's, a, it's not supposed to be something fun. It's just, it's just supposed to serve a purpose. So it might as well, so uh, look like this. And uh, I ended up using those even though I didn't want to, I tried with the bamboo poles and you can get them really close, close sometimes to some plants, but not everywhere and um, not all the time. And um, it turned out it was just, it was too much of a hassle to do this. So I ended up using the perches in the end. Uh, it still kind of works for me. It's okay. I think I found a, like a, a, um, a, a good um, compromise with the perches. I didn't use them for the ginkgo trees because they really don't look like that they wouldn't need any kind of help uh, standing up. <laughs> they just look like legitimate trees. But the other ones like um, these uh, ground nut, uh, these weird palm fern trees that are... Uh, 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 that exist here. I, uh, you can still see the poles there. I try to put there. Um, if you put like the perch right on top of them, it looks like the foliage is coming out of the perch and it's it looks like a feeder. So 
that is a plant that uh, works really well with this technique, uh, but some really don't. Um, I don't like, um, yeah, I'm putting vegetation up. I don't like the uh, uh, fruit and nut palms that we get these ones uh wait a second where can i i'm going to talk about this later there's like one instance where i'm where these palms are spawning so you know what i mean they look like they're just planted there so it doesn't make sense to put a, a thing on top these these this plant this weird little palm there i'm checking how close because of the the invisible fence really helps you to check um when uh, the vegetation is going to disappear if you place something here i place this uh um aviary thing on top of the ginkgo i'm going to delete it later and uh, yeah so um there you go this was uh what happened with the plants now i'm creating the entry uh into this uh walkthrough habitat petting zoo thing with uh for the zip line um, and I mean, there's nothing I can say about it. It just, just, just uh, see it. Uh, and I wasn't done talking about the species because there is another species I put in, um, in, and it's the Lystrosaurus and the Lystrosaurus in this case, at least, and in the herbology section, it's, um, it's a garden gnome because I, th that was the first thought I had, I have the, I have them the Lystosaurus be a garden gnome? Of course, I immediately got the comment from Robert uh, that they should be house elves, uh, which is, um, I mean, I get it, of course, and we can always add them wherever you want. I am just, uh, when I ask yourself, uh, yourself, <laughs> I just want to ask you guys what kind of creatures you think I should add, because we now have like uh, three Ankyloticus in there, and I don't know what they are. Are supposed to be. I mean, I'm 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 looking forward to your input on that. Um, and um, two really small creatures, the Lysosaurus and uh, the Oviraptor. So I think there might be a space for maybe something medium-sized. Uh, I kind of don't want to go with thestral thest th thestrals uh, because I'm planning on doing an exhibit for them. A special their very own exhibit uh, maybe in Slytherin because of the green fireflies we saw in Hogwarts Legacy so uh, not those uh, maybe they're also not very petting zoo appropriate but um, what else is there I mean we could still add um, Sinoceroptrix but those are small too uh, so I, I really think something medium is missing here and maybe you guys have have ideas what that medium creature could be so um, yeah I'm adding I, I designed this little rock formation thing so that when you exit uh, you sort of don't uh, immediately have it all in your face you're not just immediately in this garden situation but get greeted by this rock sign and Sir John Hammond and torches and this rock formation and you need to choose a path and discover what lies ahead uh, I don't know you know uh, creating some secluded sections is always nice uh, I like doing that <coughs> So, uh, yeah, putting up trees, uh, <laughs> there is really not much more uh, to say for me, but this video is coming to an, I have only 10 more minutes to go. I can do it. I can do it. It's nearly done. I'm hiding the ugly side of the zip line with torches. I hope you guys don't mind this is a, that this is a really long video, but that you enjoy this. I mean, you can watch this on not like in one go you can you know just watch one part and get back to the rest uh, at another time and whatever um <laughs> i'm really at a loss what else to tell you now i'm adding terrain texture some sand got rid of my snowy pea that i placed 
that I that I marked so I wouldn't forget that I wanted to do a petting zoo here because you know my brain sometimes it is uh, it is not braining <laughs> to quote a very famous uh, famous uh, very dear person person and uh, my my tongue is getting um, no now I'm losing words what is it I'm I don't know. I'm placing rocks, as you can see, just to add, like, you know, some spots with detail here and there. Something interesting, you know? Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, um, yeah. Um, um, texture. Getting rid of the tail of the badger. That is still here. Another rock formation. Who would have thought? To make sure that no one squeezes out there. By the way, I don't think I will ever be able to turn off hunger. Now that I have this petting zoo here. Or I need to change something about its layout. Because the small creatures can and do walk through those uh, doorways. But they always come back because this is the only place where they have uh, food and water. So all is fine. But um, I mean, okay, uh, I, it, I wouldn't be bothered if they just wandered off and w roamed the park freely if I ever had to turn off hunger because the game uh, and thirst because the game isn't, un isn't able to deal with it anymore. Uh, you know, that that helps. If you have like a park that is super detailed to turn off that stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. What else can I say? I'm adding another rock formation, just some plants, um, bushes. Love go a good bush assembly. <laughs> Bushes of the world, assemble. Uh, yeah, another seating moment behind those walls. Um, I don't know what, by the way, um, uh, is going to lie beyond this section. Um, maybe you guys have suggestions. Should I put the herb herbivore herbology section right next to it, or maybe uh, somewhere completely different? I feel like this should should be something that is in Hufflepuff too, you know, the herbology thing. Uh, but maybe maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe uh, if, if we'll have a herbology section in Gryffindor because Neville is taking care of it. <laughs> Who knows? Did I say Slytherin or Gryffindor? Oh my god. Okay, so now I'm uh, securing the rest of the perimeter of this walkthrough petting zoo section with rocks creating rock formations and on these slopes and uh, I'm going to blend them out sort of yeah with um, forest it looks kind of weird to just pay place this row of rocks but i think once the vegetation in it is in it looks really fine oh my god i'm unable to talk anymore this better come to an end soon <laughs> ah yeah so i'm uh, i'm putting these rocks here i left this little gap in the rocks uh that i'm going to uh, close with invisible fancy now i'm putting in um more paleobotany and the forest here and I'm going to close this gap that I left with invisible fence and hiding it with vegetation but I sort of liked um, to have this open kind of open spot you know not have not the entire side of this uh, closed off with rocks so you wouldn't be able to you to look beyond or up and this is also where the zip line is going uh, it's kind of nice to have this open little corridor and um, by the way I have uh, recorded a zip line ride through here it's a it's a really nice ride it's a you get a really good look at the section uh, but you will see it at the end when the glamour shots appear, which will be soon. 
in five minutes. <laughs> And now I'm just putting potted plants, like you know, adding like the last bits of detail here and there. And I added like this little corridor of the potted plants. I don't know why I decided to all of a sudden use the the um, jungle um, tropical plants here, but um, to to mix it up. And now I'm creating yet another little bench seating section along this path that is going through uh, the entire uh, exhibit you know creating moments along the path where you can just sit down and watch the animals pet them whenever they come by maybe feed them because you got something for them you know just some and um just some trying combinations of benches with walls and other decorations it was kind of fun kind of nice and it adds it adds detail so there's ev always something everywhere <laughs> you never get the feeling that um someone someone forgot to uh, to decorate this park and even though this path is mostly unlined uh, i feel it looks very detailed in here um even though there are many spots that are just you know, vegetation and a few rocks or something like that. But um, it's always changing. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy about it. Again, another bench moment that is, again, going to be different from all the other bench moments we've had before. And it's going in, it's, uh, in a bit of a curve here and uh, working with terrain constraints, of course, uh, as always. <laughs> <laughs> Our faithful friend, terrain constraints, cannot flatten. And I put these planters behind the benches. So, you know, no one would walk into you or hit you with its clubbed tail while you're sitting there. Because there is this uh, barricade of planters. Yeah, that's it. Now I put two uh, meat feeders in. For the ov raptor so they have everything they need and now i'm just going to do the same thing i did on the on the left side and um secure this with rocks so that no one can escape this way by the way you saw me a couple of times turn off or on the these contour lines uh i did that uh, a couple of times and that's just uh typical i really I just sometimes I really need them and sometimes they're just in the way so I need a shortcut just give me one key frontier please give me a key that I can press to turn those off and on whenever I want please I don't know what else to say I'm just you know this is um me placing rocks just like you saw me do before uh so you know, using the invisible fence and hiding it a bit with vegetation. And um, so, yeah, that's it. I hope you're still here. I hope you like this. I hope you have, I don't know, gotten something to see here that um, got your creative juices flowing or not, or have uh, suggestions for me. Um, what to do with this park in the future i again there are so many suggestions from the first episode episode still that i have to do i should put up a list i think i'm going to do a list um at the end of this video maybe not maybe another video <laughs> so you you know that I haven't forgotten about them. I have my list here and um, there's still much to do. There are several categories of those suggestions. Some of them are like, maybe I'll do that at the end if the park is, isn't collapsing yet. Uh, sort of um, a bonus thing. Some are like, totally, yes, definitely, let me do that. And um, putting down uh, like the last touches, terrain texture, and uh, that's it. So I hope 
again, I hope you're still here. I hope you liked this. Um, please leave me a like if you did. And if you're still here and not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And stay tuned for the next episode next week, I promise. And maybe even a live stream. So yeah, thanks guys. Take care. Um, stay inspired. Bye-bye.